What is going on YouTube? I'm Brandon. You are back in the Gill Strap Garage and today we are going to be finishing up the top end on the 05 Dyna Super Glide. All we really have left to do is some push rods, some SNS quickie push rods. I'm going to do the most detailed video that I can walking through the instructions and explaining to you how to adjust your push rods. So let's get into it. Before we head over to the bike and install the push rods, I'm going to get our push rod tubes all ready to rock with our new gaskets. Here's our O-ring kit here. So the fat ones are going to go into the head. The larger skinny ones go to your tappet block covers and uh, these smaller ones are going to seal inside the tube. We've got our old push rod tubes here. We'll do these one at a time. So this is going to be the bottom. There's the top. Pull these apart. We need to reuse the collars, the spring, the washer, and install a new O-ring. There's one old one. Oh. Install a new collar, spring, washer, o ring, just like that. Collar, spring, washer, o ring. slide that back in there okay let's do that four more times so you know what, let me show you again one more time tube collar spring washer o-ring put it in the lip side of the tube and the reason you have to change these when you're installing the put the quickie push rods look at the difference and the length of the tubes. This gives you access to be able to pull it up and install your new push rods and make the adjustments on them. If you try to reuse these tubes, you're not going to be able to reach the threaded part of the push rod to make your adjustment. Now just for the sake of it, we can put all our gaskets on here too. Just make sure as you're installing them you don't lose them or they don't fall off. So the thick ones go on top, the large thin ones go on bottom. Now we're ready to jump over to the bike. Now I'm going to I'm going to remove the push rod covers. Our kit comes with new covers. And all I'm doing is I'm taking the screwdriver and putting it in that tab and just walking it out and they pop right off. Now what I'm going to do I'm going to turn the back wheel over until one of these push rods, well until one of the cylinders is on overlap where that means both push, push rods will be moving simultaneously. That'll mean that the other side is on the base circle of the cam to where there is no tension on anything on that part of the valve train so when I cut them nothing's going to pop, nothing's going to get damaged. Let's see if I can do it without blocking the camera view. I doubt the camera will pick it up, but the rear is on overlap right now. So they're both going up and down at the same time, which means we can cut the front. All right, this is the point of no return right here. We're cutting some push rods. I'm gonna make sure you can see me. 
Oh yeah, you can see. Okay, I need to roll the other side over. Pull out the old O-rings. Now that we're over at the bike, what we're gonna do, I already have mine set, but I'm gonna explain it and try to show it to you. What we're gonna do is set one of the cylinders, doesn't matter which one you start with, on the base circle of the cam. So in order to do that, to basically find top dead center or close to it on the cylinder you want, you're going to rotate the, your back wheel and you're going to feel when your push rods, or you're gonna feel when one of the cylinders is in overlap, meaning one of the valves is opening and one of the valves is closing simultaneously. So in this case, it's the front right now. It's moving. Both are moving up and down in the front, which means the rear is gonna be on the base circle of the cam. We're gonna scoot over a little bit here and we're going to start setting up our push rods on the rear cylinder since this is the one on the base circle of the cam. In order to do this, we're taking our push rod, undoing this adjustment here. We're gonna spin this Actually, I'm gonna spin it out. I'm gonna put a little bit of oil on these threads, and then we're gonna spin it all the way in. A Little bit of oil along those threads. We're gonna collapse this thing all the way. See how this slides all the way in? You've got the nut here. It's all the way in. Now let's slide. Make sure you got the top facing up, slide with the collar goes up. And slide the push rod in. Let's see what side we're gonna do first. For the rear, Let's do the intake side first. Now, here's the part where it's hard to show. You're gonna wanna hold that nut that I showed you on your fingertips. Let your push rod slide down. And now, Holding that nut still, spin the bottom part of the push rod until it catches those threads. Okay, see I have it loose in there. I still have up and down movement there. We wanna get all that out. Just till it stops. Now, something I wanna talk about too. The reason I hold, it's important to hold that nut as you spin that adjustment out. If you let your nut fall down to the bottom of the push rod, you're gonna have a really hard time getting a pick or your fingertip from the front hole or whatever into there to lift it back up. It's easier if you just hold it, keep it caught, and spin that out so you're not, you're not fishing that nut out from the bottom of the push rod. 
I'm gonna get set up and show you guys a little trick to keep this push rod held out of your way here. All you need to do is get you a paper clip and a rubber band. Fish your, fish your rubber band through there. Spread your paper clip out a little bit, it's a little hook. Slide it through your push rod tube and you're going to expand the rubber band and catch it on one of your rocker I'm sorry catch it on one of your rocker bolts up top see I have it sitting up there now as we go to make this adjustment this is going to be real easy we're not going to be fighting this fighting this tube here it's all going to be out of our way. For these particular push rods, we need a quarter inch for the bottom, and we need two seven sixteenths wrenches for the top, or, the top part of the push rod and the jam nut. Now, reading right from the instructions here, it says holding the push rod so the top ball end is in the rocker arm cup, extending the adjusting screw until the bottom ball. The bottom ball end just contacts the tappet cup. So that's what I did here when I told you you just get all the slack out of it so you have no up and down play. Compress the hydraulic unit in the exhaust lifter while we're doing the intake right now. Doesn't matter. An additional four complete turns or 24 flats and tighten the lock nut. In order to know how far out we go, I'm going to put one red mark to keep track of how far we go around. Now some people, I've had people reach out to me and tell me that going four turns out is incorrect and that's too far. There's all kinds of, everyone has their opinions, reasoning, everything, which is fine, that's great. But I'm going based off of the directions. I've never had a problem going four turns out. They say your lifter's gonna be compressed too far and all that, but like I said, I've never had a problem. So with our little quarter inch wrench, we're gonna hold the bottom part of the push rod and we're going to extend this out four turns. That's one. That's two. Three. And that's four right there. I'm gonna run our jam nut up. I'm gonna hold the top and the bottom now with one hand. With my other hand, I'm gonna get the tension out of the jam nut. We're gonna tighten this thing up. How tight? Real tight. Now with that compressed, we're gonna let it, we're gonna get our other side set up. We're gonna get the exhaust side on this cylinder set up now. But I'm not gonna start adjusting it for probably about 20 minutes because with these valves I don't know what my clearance is what the interference would be if I've got my intake side open and it hasn't bled all the way off yet I don't want to shove my exhaust side into that valve and make contact even though it's probably not gonna happen we're not in a rush here I'm not gonna rush it 
So we'll wait for this side to bleed off before we open up our intake. I mean, before we open up our exhaust. So here, we're just gonna do the same thing, hold the nut. Run out the bottom of the push rod. Okay, just got a little bit of pressure on it there now. And it's only been a minute or two since I adjusted the back, so I'm gonna walk away from it for a little bit, come back and get ready to adjust the front. All right, it's been a little bit now. A good indication that it's bled down enough is you can grip the push rod and spin it with your fingers. When it's first adjusted, it's gonna be real tight. You're not gonna be able to spin that thing. So, spinning freely. You should be ready to adjust the exhaust side now. Same thing, hold that tube out of the way. Give us one red mark right here. We will hold the bottom side with our quarter inch and let's give her the beans. One. Two. Three, four right there. See what I'm talking about? When it's first adjusted, you're not gonna be able to spin that thing by hand. So now we're gonna hold the top and bottom. Get a nice cinch down on that. And now we wait about another 20 minutes before we jump over to the front. If you have your exhaust removed, like I do right now, you would actually be able to look into the exhaust port over here with a flashlight, shine it down there, and you'll see a little bit of daylight. You'll see that your, your valve is opened up a little bit. See, we're starting to get a little movement Tension's bleeding off of that lifter, but we want to make sure we wait plenty of time before we go to spin that engine over because we don't want to have our valves contact each other or the piston. Okay, it's been plenty of time. I'll show you here. Our push rods spin freely. What I've done while I was waiting was I made two marks here just so it's easier for you to see. We're going to get the front cylinder on the base circle of its cam or top dead center. So we're gonna put the rear into overlap now. I'm gonna spin the back tire. You can see the exhaust opening. Now the intake opening. Okay, now we can jump over to the front. We're basically just gonna repeat everything that we did on the rear. We'll start with the intake this time because it's a little easier. It's always easier to start with the rear. I 
I really wish you guys can get up close and personal with me making this adjustment, but it's such a tight space it's really just hard to see. So like I said before, I'm holding the nut, kind of holding the top part of the push rod, both with one finger, or both with one hand, and spinning out the bottom. All our slack's gone. Got a little oil on my fingers. Let's wipe the oil off of here so I can get a good paint mark on it. Now again, we'll hold the bottom. That's one. That's two. Three. And four. Spin our nut up there. There's my wrench. Let's make our last adjustment. One, two, Three, four.
My other wrench is a little thinner for the top. Damn tripods right in the way of where I need to be. Okay. It's plenty tight. Still pretty stiff. We're gonna walk away for a little while. We're gonna turn the engine over and make sure we don't have any crazy noises or anything. And then we'll put our top covers back on. Actually, while it's bleeding down, we'll get those covers on right now. So we're going to separate the top of the tube from the collar. To do this, I like to just get a screwdriver, push up on the lip. It's real cold out still, so that seal is going to fight me a little bit. Seal reset. Yep, there she clicked into place. Oh, dang it. One, two, now let's do the back. Three. Four. Now you'll also notice the old versus the new parts. These are the old ones here. These are the new ones. You see the size difference. That's to make up. The new SNS ones are longer to make up for the difference in length of the tube itself. Now everyone's got different opinions and different ways on how they install these. Whatever works for you. But I just pry down with the screwdriver a little bit. Set it in just like that. Now I've heard people take shoelaces wrap them around the back side and pull down so you don't have to put any tension on your fins but really you're not putting that much tension on there it's really difficult to do some of this stuff with the camera right in your way I wish I had a set of black collars sitting around. I, I really like just the one little black accent with the chrome. But I got rid of all that stuff when I moved.
Okay, we're still gonna let that bleed down for a little while. I still got about 15 minutes at least. Alright, it's been plenty of time. I do have the top covers removed right now. It's not really gonna be necessary for you, but some of the other changes that I've made to the bike, um, I may have some clearance issues with some new parts. You can check those videos out uh, aside from this one to see exactly what I've got going on. I've got a huge, well not a huge, but I've got a pretty good series going on building this bike. So let's turn her over. So thank you guys for watching. Hope that helps you get your bike put together, installing some quickie push rods. Now pay attention, every manufacturer of push rods is going to be a little bit different on their procedures. Just make sure you read those instructions. It's going to be pretty similar, but there could be some differences that you don't want to miss. So thank you for watching. If you like the video, drop a thumbs up. It's appreciated. Subscribe if you're not already, and we will see you in the next video.